Tuesday, so that means it is story time, and this is Miss Bree coming to you from the Westford Public Library in Westford, Vermont. Uh, it's so nice to see everyone this week. Did you know this is our 11th time of doing story time? We should have a party or a celebration. <laughs> well, today you might notice that I am sitting in a different place at the library because I brought with me some friends. It's getting a little lonely in here without all my story time friends. So I had to bring in some of my own friends and I brought in some stuffed animals that are going to be the theme of our story time today. So this little one here, um, his name's Axel <laughs> and um, he is what kind of animal? Did you say dog? You are right. Uh, we have another one here. It's another dog. The, we have some foxes that are wild dogs and we even have a wolf hiding back here. Um, and those are our theme for today is dogs. Okay, so I hope everyone brought your hands or you maybe brought your paws uh, to do our open shut them song. Okay, got them? Oh. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap. Creep them, creep them, creep them, creep them, right up to your chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. Did anyone let theirs in? If you did, I hope you just washed your hands. Remember to keep those hands nice and safe and clean. So we're just gonna jump right in and start with some stories about dogs. And the first book I wanted to read um, parts of because it's a book of poetry is called Once I Ate a Pie. And it is written by Patricia McClellan and Emily McClellan um, Char Charist. I think that's her daughter. And it's illustrated by Katie Schneider. And so I picked this because I bet you, if you have a dog at home, your dog that you have at home isn't exactly the same as like your neighbor who has a dog. Maybe it's a different kind of dog or maybe it has a different personality. So dogs are really different and varied, which makes it so exciting. The world would be very boring if every dog was exactly the same. It's that diversity that makes our world exciting. And so, I'm gonna read about a dog named Lucy. And Lucy is a special dog because Lucy was adopted from an animal shelter. Um, when dogs go missing or they get lost or people's dog has puppies um, or for some reason dogs end up without a home, they end up at an animal shelter. And you can take those dogs home um, and give them a good home in your house. So this is about Lucy. I was adopted from a shelter. I love that the couch is mine and the chairs and the bed are mine too. And the house. At night I sleep between my owners. They gave me a pillow of my own. Mine. Do you have a dog that likes to take over the whole house and think everything is theirs? Or do you have a dog that you rescued from a shelter and now they're happy to call things their own? Maybe you have a dog that's like this dog. And this little, little tiny dog is called Pocket. And here he's wearing a little raincoat. Pocket. They say I am tiny. I used to sleep in a coat pocket. I have a tiny collar and a tiny coat for when it rains. I have a tiny dish to eat my food and a tiny water bowl. I don't know why my things are so tiny. I am huge. <laughs> Do you know any little dogs that think they're a lot bigger than they are? I know a couple of those. So there's all different kinds of dogs in this book and there's all different kinds of dogs all over the world, okay? But the next book I wanna read is about dogs running free. So maybe not dogs 
um, at your house in a cage or pen or even a fenced in backyard. But what if dogs ran free? And this book is by Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is a very famous singer and songwriter um, who your parents or grandparents might know. Um, and this is one of his songs. One of his songs is called If Dogs Run Free. And it was illustrated by Scott Campbell. So I encourage you guys to ask your family if maybe you can listen to Bob Dylan's song, If Dogs Run Free. Bob Dylan has a really unique voice. It's kind of gravelly and scratchy. Kind of reminds me if a dog could really sing. So If Dogs Run Free by Bob Dylan and Scott Campbell. If dogs run free, and in this picture we can't really see it, but we have two kids here inside the house, and they're looking out the window. They're eager to get out. Here they are. If dogs run free, then why not we? Across the swooping plane, I think the kids want to run free. My ears hear a symphony of two mules, trains, and rain. The best is always yet to come. That's what they explain to me. Just do your thing. Look at all those dogs and people just being free. You'll be king. If dogs run free. It's hard not to look at this book and smile with all these dogs rolling down the hill and being so happy and the happy children. If dogs run free, why not me? Across the swamp of time, my mind weaves a symphony, a tapestry of rhyme. Oh, winds which rush my tail to thee, so it may flow and be. To each his own, it's all unknown. If dogs run free. Look at all those dogs. If dogs run free, then what must be? Must be, and that is all. True love can make a blade of grass stand up straight and tall. In harmony with the cosmic sea, true love needs no company. It can cure the soul, it can make it whole. If dogs run free. The end. So that book is almost like a piece of poetry. It's song lyrics and um, maybe you can listen to the song by Bob Dylan, If Dogs Run Free. And you can think more about what it means to be free and to run free. I noticed after these kids had a lot of outside time exploring that they were very happy. Maybe that you feel that same way when you're allowed some freedom outside um, and that you makes you feel very happy. Okay, well, speaking of happy, you know what song makes me happy? If you're happy and you know it, we're gonna do a different song today and we're gonna adapt it for our dog friends, okay? So if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We all kind of know that one. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Do you know that song? Okay, well we're gonna change it and we are going to sing If You're a Dog and You Know It. Do you think you guys can do that? I hope so, I hope Miss Bree can do it too, okay? So sing along with me. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is bark. Okay, let me hear some good barks. Let's practice first. 
<laughs> Those are some good barks. Okay, if you're a dog and you know it, bark, 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 bark. If you're a dog and you know it, bark, 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 bark. If you're a dog and you know it, then your tail, like you wiggle your tail, will really show it. If you're a dog and you know it, bark, 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 bark. Okay, now we're gonna use paws and we're gonna stomp our paws. Okay, you can do that with your feet too, but if I do that, Miss Bree's camera moves. So, if you're a dog and you know it, stomp your paws. If you're a dog and you know it, stomp your paws. If you're a dog and you know it, then your tail will really show it. You're wiggling your tail. If you're a dog and you know it, stomp your paws. Hmm. Okay, what should we do now? We're gonna do our ears. So you're gonna take your hair, if you have it, or your hands, and you can make ears. So we're gonna flop our ears. Okay. If you're a dog and you know it, flop your ears, flop, flop. If you're a dog and you know it, flop your ears, flop, flop. If you're a dog and you know it, then your tail will really show it. If you're a dog and you know it, flop your ears, flop, flop. Can you think of anything else? We're gonna do one more. We're gonna rub our bellies because dogs really like to get their bellies scratched. Okay? If you're a dog and you know it, rub your belly. If you're a dog and you know it, rub your belly. If you're a dog and you know it, then your tail will really show it. If you're a dog and you know it, rub your belly. Oh, that's fun. You can adapt that kind of song to anything. You could be a cat, you could be a, you know, Monster, chicken, whatever you got. <laughs> so, we are gonna read another story here about a dog. And this one is called Move Over Rover. And it's written by Karen Beaumont and it's illustrated by Jane Dwyer. Um, I like the name Rover for a dog. It's one of those great classic names for a dog. Move Over Rover. There's Rover. Rover's in the doghouse chewing on a bone. What a day to romp and play. Too bad he's all alone. Oh my, look at the sky. Thunder, lightning, mighty frightening. Rain is pouring. Oh, how boring. Rover's in the doghouse, sleeping through the storm. Cat is looking all around for a place that's warm. Move over, Rover. I bet they know each other, these animals. Uh-oh, what do we have here? It's a raccoon. Cat's in the doghouse sleeping through the storm. Raccoon is looking all around to find a place that's warm. Skit scat, cat. Move over, Rover. Oh my goodness, now we have a raccoon in the doghouse. Raccoon's in the doghouse, sleeping through the storm. Squirrel is looking all around to find a place that's warm. Make room, raccoon. Skit, scat, cat. Move over, rover. <laughs> you know, we have a squirrel in there. Who's looking for a place that's warm? You're right, it's a blue jay. Squirrel's in the doghouse, sleeping through the storm. Blue Jay's looking all around for a place that's warm. Squeeze in, squirrel. Make room, raccoon. Skit, scat, cat. Move over, rover. Oh, looks cuddly in there. Ooh, what do we have here? You're right, it's a snake. Blue Jay's in the doghouse, sleeping through the storm. Snake is looking all around for a place that's dry and warm. Way, Blue Jay. Squeeze in, squirrel. Make room, raccoon. Skit, scat, cat. Move over, rover. Oof. Oh my goodness, I notice our doghouse is getting a little bulgy. It's getting kind of crowded in there. And now we have a mouse. Snakes in the doghouse sleeping through the storm. Mouse is looking all around to find a place that's warm. Slide aside, snake. Out of the way, Blue Jay. Squeeze in, squirrel. Make room, raccoon. Skit, scat, cat. Move over, rover. Tight fit. Might split. Sorry, mouse. Full house. Oh. It looks 
like, did they squeeze the mouse in there? I don't know, it's somewhere in there, I think. Crowded in the doghouse, all are sleeping well. But then, sniff, sniff, they catch a whiff. What's that awful smell? Do you guys know what kind of animal smells really bad? Oh, we'll have to find out. It says, skitter, scatter, what's the matter? Scamper, scurry, what's the hurry? Look, all the animals have left the house and there's only that one stinky animal in the dog house. Can you guess what kind of animal that is? Let's see if you're right. Did you guess? A skunk. Skunks in the dog house, sleeping through the storm. The rest are racing round to find another place that's warm. Oh my, look at the sky. Storm's over. Where's Rover? Romping, racing, jumping, chasing. No. Rover's in the doghouse, chewing on a bone, soaked and sopping, tail flip-flopping. Happy he's alone. The end. That was Move Over Rover. Okay. Well, I thought we haven't had a craft in a while, so I thought I would uh, do a craft. And for our craft, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw a dog. Okay, so you might want to get a piece of paper. Um, if you have one, or you can replay the video. You can pause it um, or replay it to get our steps on how we draw a dog. So, again, thank you to my creative art department for helping me out because, you know, Miss Bree is not the best at drawing. So, even though I can do this. Okay. So, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw a circle on your piece of paper. And once you have your circle on your piece of paper, you're going to kind of make it look like a bowling ball. Okay? You're going to do a circle for the nose and two circles for eyes. And you're going to color them in. And then you're going to make yet another circle all around your eyes. But you want to make sure that the bottom of your circle is touching the bottom of the eye circle. It's starting to look more like a dog, isn't it? Okay. Now, the next two steps are you're going to make a mouth. So you kind of make a J and a backwards J coming out of the nose. And you're going to do another circle around one of the eyes and you're going to color it a different color. And then your final step is to draw on a couple of ears. And it's kind of fun to draw the ears in the same color that you used for the outer circle of the eye. And there you have one very good looking dog. See? <laughs> dog approved. Okay. So we are going to do one last story. You guys get a bonus story today. And this is a story called Groovy Joe, Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. Groovy Joe is written by Eric Litwin, and it is illustrated by Tom um, Lichen, Lichenheld. Now, you might know that name, Eric Litwin. He's the creator of Pete the Cat, okay? So the first couple original Pete the Cat books are written by Eric Litwin. So this one has some music in it too. And this is Groovy Joe, and Groovy Joe is a dog. Groovy Joe, Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. Groovy Joe saw something yummy. Groovy Joe started rubbing his tummy. Ooh, he saw an ice cream truck. Groovy Joe was living the dream. He had a spoon and a tub of ice cream. And he started to sing. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! A little dinosaur stomped into the room. He glared at the ice cream and took out 
a, what do you think? Spoon, you're right. He put on a bib, pulled up a chair, and what did Joe say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang, love my doggy ice cream, love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no, a big dinosaur burst into the room. He glared at the ice cream and took out a, what do you think? Spoon. He put on a bib and he pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang, love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. chair. What did Joe say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang, love my doggy ice cream, love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! The tub was empty, the ice cream was through, so the dinosaurs glared at you know who. What can Joe do? He turned over the tub and he made a drum. Groovy Joe beat out a rum tum 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 tum. The dinosaurs laughed. They rose from their chairs. They started to dance and they jumped in the air. Then what did they say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang together. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. That's really funny. Um, it is awesome to share, and I have loved sharing these stories with you. So I hope that you join us for our story time next week. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the stories today, and you join us for our story time next week. Um, until then, this is Miss Bree from the Westford Public Library signing off. Bye.